an incredibly cursed and evil bookstore, if I do say so myself. People have for sure been murdered there. Next I got at all, oh God. Next I got at night all blood is back. Oh, freaking heck. Hi. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but I should be packing boxes for my imminent move, but I don't want to. So instead, I'm going to tell you about all of the books that I have bought recently or been gifted recently. As some of you may know, I recently graduated with my PhD, so I had a graduation party. I also had a birthday about a month before I graduated. So yeah, I've kind of compiled quite a few books over the last couple months. So there are 20 in total here that I'm going to show you today. Three I technically ordered and they're just still haven't arrived yet, but I'll still discuss them. And then I got one really exciting box set for my birthday that I want to discuss. So I, in addition to my birthday and graduating and all that, I've also been traveling around to various job interviews. And one of the job interviews that I had was in St. Louis. So I was really lucky because the hotel that they put me up at when they were interviewing me was right down the street from Left Bank Books, which is, I guess, a really famous independent bookstore in Missouri that I had never even heard of but so I just kind of stumbled into it and it ended up being really a really good bookstore in used bookstores I don't really have a lot of luck with finding good stuff in the horror section but I was really excited because I've actually never read The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty I've seen the movie multiple times and I've listened to I think I've technically listened to the audiobook but it's it was like a more of like a performance audiobook. So I was really excited to find this kind of cool version. I have never seen this cover before and it's a, it, in really good shape for an old paperback. This was $3.50. So I, I was like, yeah, I think I'll get this and then I can actually read a physical copy for the first time. And then I also found this book, The Laws of the Skies by Gregor Courtois. And this is a relatively new release. Yeah, so this came out in 2019 and this was already like in the used section and it's again in fantastic shape. It's pretty much like new. I was really excited to find this one. This is a class of six-year-olds head into the forest for a camping trip and then basically things go awry. Things get kind of horrific and again, it's anytime kids are like sort of left to their own devices in the wilderness, it's always compared to Lord of the Flies, which is one of my favorite classics. So this has also been compared to Lord of the Flies and I love it. I want to read it. So this is the second thing I got. And then I guess I have this, I have them sort of broken up in by like where I bought them or like what I received them for. So this may seem a little chaotic to all of you, but just know that in my mind, it's like this all makes sense. Another used bookstore that I went to, I had another job interview in uh, Champaign, Illinois. And Champaign, Illinois also has a really fantastic used bookstore. I think it's called the Jane Addams Bookstore. I'm gonna feel really dumb if I mess that up because I got a bookmark and everything. An incredibly cursed and evil bookstore, if I do say so myself. And I mean that in a good way. It's absolutely haunted. People have for sure been murdered there. I don't have proof, but you can just feel it when you walk in there. And just like based on the decor and stuff, it's like, yeah, someone died in here. So that's definitely the kind of energy I like to feel when I'm shopping for books. It is definitely like an older bookstore. So it wasn't one where I went in and immediately was like, okay, I'm going to find a bunch of really good like new releases or like recent releases. So I kind of switched gears and immediately tried to just find kind of cool editions of old books that I like or that I want to read. So the first one that I found was is an old book from I think the 80s that I've never read, which is The Collector by John Fowles. And this is a really cool old edition. It's got like the green like colored edging of the pages. Just like really just a nice old paperback, but it's honestly in great shape. It's just got like one little bend here. This was $3.50. I mean, come on, they were basically giving it to me. This, I don't know much about. I just know it's disturbing because this man, I believe, collects women. He's sort of like, yeah, like kidnaps them and uh, keeps them and tries to make them fall in love with him. So he's like the original incel. And yeah, I'm excited to read about him. Another book I always look for when I'm at a used bookstore is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck because that is a class, that's my favorite classic. And I'm trying to collect every edition that I can possibly find. So I currently have nine different editions of the book. And yeah, I found this other one, this old edition, part of the International Collectors Library. So it's got a nice gold 
embossed spine and then it has some sort of like leaves and acorns on the front. Just trying to have oak trees. I think oak trees are what make acorns. So it's kind of weird, weird design choice. But anyway, I'm getting off track. It's got a little built-in bookmark. We love those. Probably this is the book I've read most repeatedly, I guess, in my lifetime. So I was excited to find a new version that I had never seen before. And then again, the horror section in used bookstores is usually just like riddled with Stephen King and Dean Koontz and just like old books. There's not really not a lot of modern horror in used bookstores. At least if there is, it doesn't stay on the shelves for a very long time. So I was pretty pleased to find The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay because this is a book that I listened to on audiobook. I had kind of low hopes because I didn't like his other book uh, that I had read but I really, really enjoyed this one. This is about a, um, a pair of husbands that go on a camping trip with their daughter. And then these unexpected people arrive and sort of hold them hostage in their home and are claiming that the apocalypse is coming and they have to make a sacrifice to save the world. So it's definitely very tense. It kept me guessing. It has interesting villains. So um, I was really excited to find this pretty much brand new copy. And I mean, it's not like the prettiest book cover and I don't like when it has like, you know, like specially priced and like, or if it's like a book that's adapted into a movie or a TV show, I hate when it has something like now on Netflix, you know, it just kind of cheapens the book, I think, and kind of makes it feel really like not unique. But this was just so cheap and yeah, I really like the spine. And I'm fine with a little paperback, so I compromised and got it. Okay, next, my local bookstore was having a 20% off everything sale, which to me is just kind of unheard of with, with new books. And I kind of talked about some of these in my mid-year book freak out tag. I kind of already gave like little little sneak peek of what I've what I got. But the first one that I purchased was Mostly Dead Things by Kristen Arnett. I've previously talked about With Teeth by Kristen Arnett on this channel. Really enjoyed that. So I really like Kristen Arnett's writing because she writes really complex characters, really nuanced characters. There's no one who's like pure good or pure evil. It's like everyone is a really mixed bag and I think that that's realistic. So I really like how she builds her characters. But this is about a family who is in the taxidermy business and following the unexpected passing of the patriarch of the family, the uh, daughter has to step up and take over the business and kind of wrangle her family as it's falling apart and imploding. So I really was excited to, to find this because it just has really cool cover art, really, you know, eye-catching spine, and I just really like Kristen Arnett's writing. So this was a good find. And then the next one that I found was New Animal by Ella Baxter. This is also kind of in the same vein as Mostly Dead Things, I would say, in that it's this woman who works in her family business, but instead of being in taxidermy, she works in her family's, like, mortician business. And then um, she experiences an unexpected loss as well. And then this whole story is about her trying to seek refuge and kind of seek comfort in her birth father. And then she also finds comfort, I think, in the BDSM community. So I don't know. I just like women, I guess, grieving in weird ways. And that's, I'm going to read this and I hope I like it. Next, I picked up a new release from early 2022, and that is String Follow by Simon Jacobs. This follows a group of teenagers in Adena, Ohio. They're sort of stalked by this dark force and horror ensues. I know that sounds really vague, but that's pretty much all I know about it, and I'm excited to read it. At this store, I also picked up Shit Cassandra Saw by Gwen E. Kirby. This is a collection of short stories that's supposed to be like feminist, horrific, thriller, the blurb on the back is just like really telling. It says, Margaret Atwood meets Buffy in these funny, warm, and furious stories of women at their breaking points from Hellenic times to today. Virgins escape from being sacrificed, witches refuse to be burned, horrors aren't ashamed, and every woman gets a chance to be a radioactive cockroach warrior who snaps back at catcallers. So I didn't know I wanted to be a radioactive cockroach warrior until I read that, but now I do. So I need to read this to figure out how I can transform myself into that. All right, the next book that I picked up was The Grip of It by, I'm going to say Jack Jenick. I still don't know how to say her name and I feel really bad, but this is a haunted house literary horror novel about a couple who moves into a, a home and they have to deal with the prospect that it could be haunted. I really like the little weird faces on it and then the cover is obviously really gorgeous and I love that it has 
like little ghosty embossed um, drawn faces on the front as well. Really excited to get into this one. Next I got At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop. And this is a book that I had actually seen on the shelf, didn't pick up, and then like weeks later I was still thinking about like why didn't I get this book? It looked so good. So then when I saw it again on this shopping trip, I was like, yeah, we're, we're taking you home. So this is about a Senegalese man who fights in World War I in the French army and one of his comrades who he's really close with is mortally wounded, asks him to kill him to spare him suffering, and the narrator, the main character, refuses because he just can't do it. Uh, and then his friend inevitably suffers a really bad death. He really has, you know, he's in a lot of pain the whole time. So then that really drives the main character mad. And as such, every night he crosses enemy lines to murder a German soldier and bring his hand back um, sort of as a trophy. So then this whole process kind of drives him insane, I think. And then his own comrades in the French army start to really worry like, this guy might be a little crazy. He might be into some weird shit that we don't want to associate with. So this also won the 2021 Booker. I don't know if that means anything great for me, but I'm just excited because the title is really cool. Yeah. Next, I got My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. I have not read any Otessa Moshfeg before, but she seems to be like an internet book darling. This is about a woman who is very depressed and she has an option basically instead of killing herself, she can go to sleep for a year and then reawaken and hopefully that will sort of like restore her mental vitality. So that's really all I know about it. And I've heard people really love it. They really love Otessa Moshfag's writing, so I am hoping that I also enjoy it. And then lastly, this is one I had never even heard of, but it just like the spine and the cover really jumped out to me. And that is The Mutations by Jorge Comanzal. I just read like the back at the bookstore and I was like, yeah, this sounds pretty cool. Our main character is a man who is a conventional family man, but he gets cancer of the tongue, which disallows him from speaking. I think it's pretty weird. I think this is a pretty weird book because then his maid gifts him a foul-mouthed parrot as a birthday gift. And then I'm thinking the parrot probably starts to speak for the main character. So kind of weird oddball, dealing with trauma, a rough hewn portrait of regret, rage, and finally resignation, as well as a bold treatment of an unspeakable yet universal reality, which I'm assuming that universal reality is death. So yeah, I'm excited to read this. I hope that it's as good as I am like wanting it to be, but we'll see. Okay, and then sort of like the last stack are books from like birthday, graduation, but then also just like random gifts from my mom. So I bought a couple volumes of some manga series that I am collecting. Haikyuu volume 13. This is about boys high school volleyball. I will not shut up about this series. It's so good. Great character development, so wholesome very uplifting, makes me happy. This is like my comfort, one of my comfort forms of media. And then I also got volume six of Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. This is not a comfort to read. This is definitely psychological horror, pretty messed up stuff happening, themes of child abuse, being raised by an insane parent, being gaslit by an insane parent. Just a lot of messed up stuff happening here. And I love it. I also picked up Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. I think it's about a young girl who feels really out of place in her, in society and like in her community. And she just feels very alien, very alienated. Occult sensation, dreamlike and wonderful, takes place in an uncanny universe. So I'm excited. I've heard that this is really good and I really hope I like it. I have a couple books that I got from my mom because anytime she hears or watches one of my videos and I just mention, oh, this is a book that I want but I don't have yet, she will like buy it for me. She'll be like, there's a book in the mail for you. So thanks mom. Thank you for enabling my book addiction. Uh, so the first one that she purchased for me was The Troop by Nick Cutter. This is one that I literally just spoke about in my last video and was like, oh yeah, this is a really good book and you should read it. And then I like just kind of offhandedly like tried to look at my bookshelf and I was like, oh yeah, that's one I don't have yet. And then like two business days later, this was on my doorstep. So mom is nothing if not efficient. This is another one that has been likened to Lord of the Flies. 
It's about a Boy Scout troop that goes on a camping trip with their scoutmaster to this remote island. And then this unwelcome visitor stumbles into their campsite and basically chaos is unleashed on their idyllic weekend away. And it instead turns into one of horror. So yes, this is really fast paced, a lot of fantastic body horror. I would read The Troop. If you're trying to decide between reading The Troop or reading The Deep, I really preferred The Troop over The Deep. That's my piece, read The Troop. And then the other one that my mom also purchased for me because she heard me talk about it in a video is With Teeth by Kristen Arnett. And this was one where this was the first, my first Kristen Arnett book that I had ever read. And Kristen Arnett's books are kind of interesting because when I first start out reading them, I'm kind of like, mm, this is maybe like three stars. But then it's like, it really is as I read more and more, it just makes me, the, the way she builds characters, I just like don't want to stop reading. I want to keep reading about them. I want to know what they're going to do. I want to know how their relationships change. I want to know how they change. So I ended up really liking this like a lot more than I thought I would and I think I gave it like 4.25 out of 5 stars. For those of you who don't know what it's about, Sammy and her wife are raising their son Samson and Sammy is really not loving motherhood. She's having some regrets. You know, she likes her son but she doesn't know if she loves her son. She's a really complicated protagonist because she is kind of a crappy person herself. Uh, but that's what I love about Kristen Arnett's books. There's no one person who's like the good guy. Everyone, even the protagonist is kind of messed up. And even the villain of the story, you can kind of see from their point of view and you can kind of empathize with them and see why they are the way that they are. So yes, With Teeth by Kristen Arnett is really good. You should read it. Okay, last thing before I do my like huge finale piece and then show you or discuss the ones that I ordered that haven't arrived yet. So this was again, I had, I had a gift card and I had just finished reading Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. So then when I saw this at Barnes and Noble, uh, Growing Things by Paul Tremblay, I was like, sure, I'll pick this up and read a little bit more of Paul Tremblay's writing. This is a short story collection by Paul Tremblay. I'm assuming that they're all horror stories because all of the stuff that I've read by Paul Tremblay has all been horror, but I don't know for sure. We shall see. I've had a really rough time this year with short story collections, I would say. I don't know, I just don't, maybe short story collections just aren't for me because I find myself really underwhelmed by them. And there hasn't ever been a collection where I read and enjoy the majority of the stories. So I'm hoping Paul Tremblay proves me wrong. Okay, last big thing that I got for my birthday that I have been wanting for so long, basically since it released, the Demon Slayer box set. So my mom got me this for my birthday. It has all the volumes of Demon Slayer, Kometsu no Yaiba. I'm only showing this side and then I'll show you like the like stubby sides, I guess. Because the other broad side of the box set is kind of, it's not, it's like a spoiler. It's like a scene or a still from like one of the final battles. So I think that's really spoilery and I don't think, I don't want to show it because yeah, if you haven't finished reading it and you don't want it to be, I don't know, it's just, that's just kind of not cool. So I'm just gonna show you this, it's beautiful. It has like a handle in case you ever wanna go anywhere with all 23 volumes of Demon Slayer. You can take it on the go. This could be your carry-on on your airplane ride. And then when you wanna start reading, you just, oh sh And then whenever you wanna start reading, you just have to really um, discreetly pull off the Velcro top and then it just, folds down and then you have all 23 volumes right here just nice and shiny and beautiful and then it also came with this well a couple things it also came with these like posters which i'll show you poster with tanjiro and nezuko and then we also get this demon slayer core special report which is just a bunch of really cool concept art which i love i love concept art like early stages. It has like a bunch of profiles about all the characters. Oh, it's like has like a glossary of all the different like places and like Demon Slayer specific terminology. Storyboards, some really early storyboards. I just love it. Love it so much. Just a really great collector's item. So I think if you're a fan of Demon Slayer, if you've been wanting to read the series, I highly recommend it. 
It's obviously complete and it is really rare for a manga set to be released as like a box set or like a, you get the complete collection for one price. It's really great. I highly recommend it. Demon Slayer, love forever. But then the three, I have three other ones that I ordered with another gift card that have not arrived yet. So the first one is Cunning Folk by Adam Neville. This is a folk horror novel, I think. It might be a novella, but I don't know how long it is. And I think this is about a couple who move into this neighborhood and then their like neighbors are kind of creepy and weird and there's something to do with like a boar or like a boar mask. I don't know. The cover looks fantastic. I'm excited to read it. The next one that I got was Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. And I purchased this because when I've read stuff about it online, people say that it's really creepypasta-esque and the whole story really reads like a creepypasta, which I love. So I'm really excited for that one. And then the last one I got was Dear Laura by Gemma Amor. And I think this one's a novella. I'm, I think that one's shorter. And I honestly don't know really what that one's about. I just know that it's supposed to be like really, really scary, really disturbing. Can't remember where I heard of it or even it was recommended to me, but I'm excited to read it. Please, for the love of God, don't let me buy any more books before my move because I really cannot, I cannot move any more books. Before you go, look at my new TBR cart that I built and sticker bombed myself. So the top rack are all Junji Ito stickers. The middle rack are all Haikyuu stickers. And the bottom rack are all Demon Slayer stickers. Whoop, almost fell over. Here are the other stickers on the other side. Junji Ito, Haikyuu, it came with some of these really cool little clips that I don't know what I'm going to put on. And Demon Slayer. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Bye.